Hello everyone, I am Veos, and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Lightest SSTO ever. Now granted, I could have really, really tried and taken out a little bit more fuel, and I could have probably gotten a 580 kilogram, maybe even a 579 kilogram SSTO, but uh, who, 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 who has time for that? So I was strolling around YouTube, you know, like you do, and I found that Pilot had came out with a video of the smallest, lightest SSTO ever. If you don't know who he is, go ahead to his channel and give him some love. But apparently he made an SSTO that was 610 kilograms compared to the one that I came out with, which was 615. Now, mind you, when I built the SSTO, I had an understanding that there were certain rules I had to follow, such as the ability to generate electricity, no loopholes, no workarounds, straight up stock SSTO. That was the rule. However, as I'm scrolling down the videos, I find yet another SSTO, 591 kilograms, made by a YouTuber called JYF921. Now his video actually says 592 kilograms, but while looking at the video, I'm reading 591. So I'm thinking that maybe that was a typo. But anyway, what JYF921 does, oh, and by the way, really great content creator, go to his channel, check him out, give him some love. But what he does is not only does he take off the solar panel, but he takes the front air intake and flips it upside down. Now, this is a game mechanic loophole, aka glitch, where nose cones and air intakes create more drag when they're pointing forward than they do when they're pointing backwards. Like you see here in this test run, the drag with the air intake pointing backwards is slowly turning into nothing. This of course means that the small little SSTO has way less drag now and is able to do more with less. It kind of reminds me of that wing or aileron glitch that they had years and years ago where you could literally flap into space. You could flap your wings into space, kind of like that. It's a loophole or glitch that's been around since I can remember. When it was first discovered way back when, a lot of your SSTOs looked kind of weird with all their noses turned inside out, but it's still considered a loophole or part glitch. The only reason why I say glitch is because if there was any kind of logic behind the parts, kind of like Ferrum Aerospace, putting a flat top on your spacecraft, even if it is an aerodynamic nose cone, flipped backwards would create a crap ton more drag than if you were to flip it the right way around. But this is stock KSP we're talking about, so eh, things are a little weird. Just, Just deal with it. But oh no, it got better. As I was scrolling down YouTube, I found someone that said they had a 540 kilogram SSTO. What, what the, the fuck, fuck, fuck have, have I, started? I started? Now what they did was put their SSTO on top of the highest mountain in order to cut through a lot of the thicker atmosphere. I mean, yeah, that's a tactic, I guess. You definitely help save a little bit more fuel that way, for sure. Hell, I tried it out with the 581 kilogram SSTO that I just made, and I ended up with a whole lot of fuel left over, which tells me that with that kind of tactic and this kind of loophole SSTO, you could possibly make one around 570 some odd kilograms easy by taking away some of the fuel. Now, their channel name is Hamza, I, th I think. It's, I think that's pronounced... Hams, uh, probably, probably murdering that horribly, but check them out, give them some love. But here's the thing. When I try to recreate their SSTO, I noticed something strange or off using the same exact parts. The SSTO that I was able to come up with using the same exact parts and build according to their video came out to 580 kilograms. Yet when you look at their video, it says 540 kilograms. I thought, well, maybe it's because they took some fuel away. Uh, at closer inspection with their video, I noticed that when they launch, they have a full tank of gas. So that can't be it. I do notice that the parts are a little strange looking, something that you would see with a mod. So so I'm guessing that without knowing when they made this video, the mod somehow made the parts lighter than actual stock. Now I've found this out the hard way too, that restock actually changes a lot of the aerodynamics of the parts. It was very sad, heart wrenching, because I loved restock, but that's why I no longer use restock. So when you're building the lightest SSTO ever, best to just go ahead and make sure that all your parts are 100% stock. But yet as I was going down the rabbit hole, I found yet another lightest SSTO ever. His channel name is FierceBlueJ13. Go ahead, check him out, give him some love. But he uses a, what we call in the Kerbal Space Program business, a Kraken drive. By using the Cal 1000, you can put an engine's thrust into the negative. This of course forces the game engine 
engine to calculate fuel consumption and electricity and all that jazz in opposite numbers to what the part is actually supposed to be calculating. In other words, with the Cal 1000, you can make an engine generate fuel. Also with the Cal 1000, you can make the thrust inconceivably high, turning a tiny little ant engine like this into something more powerful than all of the engines in the game combined. This, of course, is a glitch. It's a loophole, which is why it's under the category of crack and drive. It's very fun, don't get me wrong. I've made lots of futuristic SSTOs using the Cal 1000, but is it 100% legit? Eh, I'll let you decide. When you start talking about loopholes such as flipping parts backwards in order to mask their drag cubes, when you start talking about using things like Cal 1000 to generate infinite fuel and infinite thrust, you're definitely diving into the world of the Kraken. This world also comes with other loophole technologies, such as the gear drive and the docking port drive. Hell, with a docking port itty bitty SSTO, you can make an SSTO that's 150 give or take kilograms that needs no refueling ever and can reach speeds beyond that of light if you sat down and stared at your screen long enough. <laughs> But alas, when I see videos like this, it just brings a smile to my face because it's the KSP community being creative and imaginative and using every single little tactic and technique that they can in order to build something beautiful. I encourage you all to check out their channels and give them lots of encouragement and love because that's what the KSP community is all about. As for now, I am going to stick with the 581 kilogram SSTO that does not use any loopholes or crack and drives. Oh wait, I forgot, it does. <laughs> okay, scratch that. I am going to stick with the 615 kilogram, you know what, this is getting ridiculous. I will let my audience decide what SSTOs from what channels they like the best, because that's how it's supposed to really work, right? Anyway, I'm starting some shorts now, some YouTube shorts, YouTube, uh, yeah. Bleh. Hopefully I might get some views from that. I'm gonna start putting out tips and stuff for SSTOs and whatnot and anything else I can think of. We'll see how it works. So if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you really, really liked it, consider subscribing. We upload often, mostly SSTO stuff. And if you really, 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 really liked it, we also have a membership program. You can check it out. It's got cool stuff, emojis and whatnot. But that's it for today in this Kerbal Space Program video, SSTO, the lightest SSTO evers. Love you all, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.